Kenny Boyd Broncos into their non-district schedule with a 42-14 victory over Louisville. I'm joined by head coach Don Drake. And coach, it was a game that in the first half you guys kind of struggled to get in the groove of things, but in the second half you really pulled away strong. Yeah, I was pretty disappointed in our first half performance. Uh, not that it was terrible, but I just thought we could play with a little more fire and a little more intensity than what we did on both sides of the football. We challenged the kids at halftime um, about that, and then I thought they came out in the second half and really established themselves and were able to pull away with a pretty nice victory. Is it understandable sometimes, you know, for a kid, you know, sometimes you think, you know, it might be an easier opponent, so they kind of have a different mentality. How tough is it for you to make sure that they are, their minds are right going into the game? Well, I think that's, that's a natural process. I mean, I definitely agree with you, and, and I think that uh, as a coach, you, you speak to that constantly in terms of respecting your opponent, play the game the way that you're capable. It's all about you playing your best performance regardless of who you're playing against. I mean, so we talk about those things quite a bit. Um, as, as high school kids, you know, sometimes they have to experience that a little bit to truly understand what you're talking about. And I think that was an example of that the other night in the first half, that we were better as a football team in the second half than they were in the first, you know. And I think that was pretty evident to our kids. And then trying to get them to understand that we've got to play four quarters of that kind of football is, is what's crucial in terms of our success. And so uh, I think they understand that. Fortunately, we're, hopefully we learned that lesson, and, and hopefully we learned it through a victory and not through a loss, you know. So that's, that's what we've, we've got to continue to preach and to guard against. Let's take a look at the highlights and see how that all shaped out for you guys. In the first quarter, you start off with a nice drive, and Brian Driscoll is used very often in this game, had a couple of nice runs, but you end up getting stuck at their 24-yard line and end up turning it over. Yeah, we did. I thought we came out of the gate pretty well. We were coming off the ball really well up front. We had some nice gains uh, on the ground. We got down there in, in the red zone, and we sputtered, and uh, that was disappointing. You know, we've got to be able to finish drives, and that was one of the things that we talked about at halftime is we've got to be able to put the ball in the end zone and come away with points. Louisville ends up coming away with points on their first drive. Their running back, Brown, had a big 64-yard run against your team, but after that, for the most part, your defense settled down and was able to contain them. Yeah, I thought so, and he's a, he's a very good back. He's very hard to tackle, you know, and I think that our kids had to figure out pretty quickly. Unfortunately, it, it took giving up a 60-something yard run for us to figure that out, that, you know, you better go wrap up. We better gang tackle, or he's going to be very hard to bring down. And so, you know, he was able to break away uh, some in the first half and put some yardage up, but I think in the second half we limited him to somewhere around 35 yards in the second half. So I was pretty pleased with our defensive performance in the second half of the game. Driscoll punches it in for a 12-yard touchdown run and evens the score at seven apiece. And in the second quarter, you come up with an interception of their quarterback after your quarterback had thrown an interception on fourth and ten. Yeah, and the turnovers, again, are critical in any ball game. I think defensively we've, we've forced nine turnovers in the last two weeks, uh, which, is, which is nice. I mean, that's something you want to be, uh, be ahead of in the stat category is the number of takeaways you have versus the number of giveaways. And so... Oftentimes, football games are determined based on uh, the turnover ratio, and so we've been pretty fortunate in the last couple of weeks. There you see an interception by Adam Brown um, that our turnover ratio has been very much positive in our favor. Curtis does a nice job to bounce back from that interception he threw, leads your team on a drive, and it's going to be Kevin McCormick with the 14-yard touchdown grab on a nice throw and catch. Yeah, and this was critical because it was a 7-7 seven to seven ball game, and we put a drive together right before the half and finished it with that touchdown pass to Kevin and gave us a 14-7 lead headed into the halftime. They miss a field goal before halftime. Kind of sparks the momentum in the third quarter. You're able to score on another touchdown pass. This time it's – or no, not a touchdown pass. You have a big 25-yard gain to Calvin Howard. And then Ryan Driscoll again punches it in to give you a 21-7 lead. Yeah, and it was a really nice play by Calvin. Uh, we threw the ball out here in the flat. It looked like the guy had him wrapped up, and he broke away and was able to scamper down the sideline to get as close to, uh, close to the end zone. We were able to punch it in. Defensively all night long, Louisville is trying to run the ball. And except for the first couple <laughs> of series, your defense really did, did a nice job to crash in on Brown and take away the running game, and their quarterback wasn't able to find anything downfield either. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, I, Brown's a great runner, you know, and that's what they do. I mean, their offense is based upon 
uh, giving him the ball and then being able to move the ball effectively on the ground. The first half we, we figured out why they were able to do that, why they were successful doing that, and how, you know, how he was rated as high as he was coming into that ball game. Fortunately for us, we were able in the second half to, to limit the number of snaps they had and, and to do a better job of tackling him in the second half. Use the option very effectively in this game. What's the key to running that option attack? Well, I think uh, execution up front obviously is vital to any any play that you run off offensively. But you know your quarterback's got to be very disciplined in terms of making the right read and and uh, executing that play on the edge. And I thought Curtis did a great job of that the other night. Driscoll has a couple more touchdown runs for your team, and then Dedrick Scrivens at the end of the game. He gets a nice 23-yard touchdown run as well. He does. You know, we were able to put Dedrick in the backfield. He's a sophomore, and, you know, he was our freshman running back last year, and now we've moved him to the slot because of, you know, having Brian returning as a starter there. And so it gave us an opportunity the other night to put Dedrick there in the backfield and get him some carries, and he was able to put the ball in the end zone as well. So he finished the game with a 14 to – or, sorry, a 42-14 to 14 victory. Brian carries the ball 37 times for 267 yards, four touchdowns. Impressive night for him, an impressive night for your offensive line. No doubt. I mean, anytime you run the football for the number of yards that we put up the other night, you've got to feel good about what those five guys and, and our tight end, those six guys up front are doing in terms of, uh, of our blocking scheme and coming off the football. So very, very excited about where we are up front right now with those guys, and we look forward as we start district play this week to – to hopefully continue in that process. The passing game for your team is not one where your quarterback's going to throw it 40 times a game. Only 11 attempts for Curtis Ladd in this game, but what he does well is he completes seven of those 11, very good with his decision making, throws a touchdown, had one pick, but he did a good job all night long to manage that game. He did, and I've been very, very pleased with Curtis and the job he's done uh, leading our team from the quarterback position. You know, whether it's throwing the football, whether it's him running the option, uh, we did some other quarterback run things with him uh, against Louisville, managing the game, helping our tempo. I mean, Curtis has really done a great job for us this year at the quarterback position. What are some of the positives that you really want to take out of this game? What did you do well against Louisville? Well, I thought the way that we finished was a huge positive. I mean, to be able to go in at halftime, challenge the kids about our intensity level, uh, talk to them about the mistakes that we were making, we felt like we were making in the first half. Uh, and for our kids to come out and respond the way that they did in the second half, I think is a, is a big positive, you know. Now what we've got to carry forward with that is, is coming out from the beginning of the game and playing with that kind of intensity level. I mean, we know with district play starting, the next five weeks are going to be um, very, very critical. and It's going to be such a challenge, you know, for us. And so, I mean, our kids, I believe, are ready for that challenge, but they're going to have to be focused from the beginning. Yeah, they'll have to play four quarters against this Plano West team that you're playing against. What are some of the things that Plano West does well that you've been able to work on in the bye week? Well, I think they're, they're very effective running and throwing the football. I mean, their quarterback makes them go. You know, that kid's a, a pretty talented player. He does some great things running the ball himself. They've got two quality backs that are in the backfield. They've got a receiving core that does a pretty good job of catching the football, and the quarterback puts the ball in the money. So in terms of explosive offense, uh, they're very, very, very – hard to defend because they spread the ball all over the field and, and uh, make you play assignment responsibility. And, uh, of course, you've got to commit a certain number of guys to be able to get there to stop the running game, which puts a lot of pressure on your secondary to be able to make plays. So, you know, we've spent a lot of time in preparation for what they do, and uh, it's a big challenge for our defense this week is, is they're going to have to contend with not only a running game but a running and throwing game. How much do you think that this extra week of preparation helps your team playing Plano West in terms of just having one week to prepare? Well, I think it's a big plus, you know, for a lot of things. Uh, one, it gives us a chance to refocus, gives us some extra time in film study and in preparation and practice for them. Uh, it gives our kids a chance to relax a little bit too, which I think is important. I mean, they've had a, they've they've been pretty much full tilt since we started August the 13th. So. You know, they needed to heal up a little bit. They needed to rest and recuperate a little bit, which we gave them a couple of days off to do that. And, and then we got three extra practices in that we wouldn't have gotten in a, in a traditional week, uh, extra days of film study. So, you know, I feel like by the time we get to Friday, our kids will be very well prepared for, for facing that first district opponent. You have a small district, so you don't have a lot of games, only five to work with. Sometimes two wins might be able to get you into a playoffs in this district. How do you, you know, prepare? This is not only one of the smaller districts, but also one of the strongest overall. 
No doubt, it's going to be very, very competitive. You know, again, with, with only six teams, um, you know, everybody's got a chance. You know, I think this is going to be a district that we're going to go into week 10 and there's going to be a lot of playoff spots that are going to be on the line. Uh, I think it's going to be a very competitive district. I think it'll be one that'll be uh, pretty well balanced, and so it should be an exciting district race for, for everybody involved. After starting 0-2 this season, you've come back now with three straight victories. How much does that help your team going into district play rather than maybe being on a losing streak going into it? Oh, I think it's huge, you know, and especially going into the open week off a big victory is, is a big positive. Um, you know, if you, were to, if you were to take a loss in the open week and then you have to sit there for two weeks and stew over it before you get a chance to go play again, uh, no doubt winning is a great thing. You know, and the fact that we've been able to win the last three straight, I think our kids feel good about where we are right now. Uh, the thing we've got to do is continue to stay focused, continue to improve every week because now's the time of year where you got to play your best football, you know. And so our kids know that. They understand that. we got to, we got to go show that when we get a chance to compete on Friday night. It's been three great victories in a row for you, Coach. And hopefully for McKinney Boy Broncos, they'll make it four straight. They open up district play against Plano West. And it's a home game as well, Friday night at Ron Post Stadium. That will finish things off for this episode of Sports Talk. We want to thank Jeff Smith, Mike Fetchy, and Don Drake for their time on the show today. All three schools are in action this Friday. McKinney is on the road taking on Plano. North also has a short trip. They play Lucas Lovejoy. The Boyd Broncos take the main stage in town as they host Plano West at Ron Post Stadium. Next time, we'll visit once again with the coaches and discuss the Friday night games. Until then, for all of us here at Sports Talk, I'm Tyler Sloan. Have a great week.